I got so many projects with this Z that I need to take on. Uh, it's hard to even know where to start, but I think today we're doing rear subframe bushing collars. Then we also have poly trans mount. We also have some uh, new springs for the shifter itself to give us a little bit more firmness, a little better feel. And we have the plenum spacer as well. So if you guys are interested in any of those installation projects, make sure you're following along and you're subscribed to the channel. But let's dive into the rear subframe bushing collars today. Got the subframe bushing collar components here them laid out and ready to go. I've done these with the Q50 so I have kind of an idea what, what to expect, what's going on, but it's kind of going into this one blind. I'm not sure what tools exactly we're going to need or what supplies, but I'll be sure to point them all out and include them as we as we go along. I'll let you know what we're using. So obviously the rear portion of the subframe is back here. This is one section we're dealing with. Another section here. So this bracket's got to come out. Then more forward portion the more forward portion is right here of course right so let's see i have to take that bracket off it's like we'll have to take that ugly ass w piece off of there um clearly impact is going to be our friend here looks like the ends of this bracket are 19 millimeter bolts where the two in the center here are 14s just loosened up for the time being and obviously we're supporting the subframe or the rear diff in this case with a jack just to be safe we don't want it to come too far down always good to have a little bit of safety in place these are 12s on the w bracket neighbors think they're doing mowing their grass right now gotta have a little respect <laughs> anyway looking at the directions here just to confirm the collar C the C collars go on the rear side of the subframe so closest to the rear diff you can see on the top or sorry yeah on the top the underside goes the A's and then toward the front of the car we have the D's that go on top the big D's and then these are the G's they get stuck up in the underside there. I don't know if this is showing up or not, but now we have enough, I think we have enough wiggle room. I didn't drop the exhaust and I'm lazy, so I am hoping I don't have to drop the exhaust. I'm gonna get a little WD-40, make sure we're all lubed up in there so all these uh, collars slide into the rubber bushings nicely. I know that was a thing with my Q50. I just made sure that they got all nice and lubed up just so everything kind of slides together properly. Otherwise, 
little bit tough to, to move them around, finagle them. So here we go. Okay, we've exposed this now. We got the bracket totally removed. Put the nuts back on just to make sure we have a little bit of security on both sides. Um, and remember, we've now taken the weight from the subframe. Uh, we're no longer supporting it with the jack, but I do have the jack under here still, just, you know, safety measure. But we basically have to pull the subframe down a little bit to give us enough room to put the top side collars in on the front and the back. And then we'll put the bottom side ones in. Should be golden. Again, the G's on the bottom side. It'll slip right over the nut, actually. Beautiful. On the top one, it doesn't push all the way in, but I found it will when the subframe is pressed back up against the frame of the car. Uh, and I found that the opening of the collar itself uh, it, the collar seems to fit best when the opening of the collar is facing toward the inside of the car. Uh, it just seems to push in easier, so that's how I did it there. And don't be afraid if you got to get a pry bar in here and get yourself a little bit of extra room on the top side. It seems the subframe subframe seems to like to tilt down toward the front of the car. The top side kind of pulls back up against itself, so just put a little pry bar in there, move it down. Especially if you got the nuts on the bottom, uh, it shouldn't go anywhere. And if you have your little support system underneath the rear diff, uh, it shouldn't fall down on you. But still be careful, of course. I don't know if my bushings are just super dry or what, but the collars just fell right in on the top side. I don't know if the camera can see that or not, but. I think we got it all done. Don't have any extra parts. I think everything is torqued down. W brace back on, actually sanded it down a bit and uh, painted it black again, just for a little bit of additional protection against rust and corrosion. Don't have any extra bits left, so I think we got all everything put back in place properly as well. Didn't even have to drop the exhaust. That's one of the benefits to having a single exit tome. You may or may not have to drop your exhaust. Just keep that in mind. Not too bad of a job, not too bad of a job at all. Ready to get this thing down and test it out. I don't know that we'll do it in this video, 
uh, but surely in a very, very soon upcoming video, we'll get this thing on the ground and test it, get some more underground footage, see if we reduced any of that wheel hop and movement in the subframe that you guys saw probably in the rear diff bushing video. So check that out if you haven't already. Link in the description. It'll be in the cards. It'll be on the end screen. Blah, blah, blah. Go check that video out. See if we see any improvement. But I am expecting some dramatic improvement. So looking forward to it. Thanks for watching this one, guys. We've got more coming up. Trans Brace, uh, Plenum Spacer, uh, Springs, uh, more stuff. Uh, oh, upper control arms for the front. Stuff coming. Stick around. See you in the next one.